Welcome to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Tade Boboye, the lead pastor of Wellman Heights. I greet you with Christ's joy. The psalmist says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and we'll be glad in it. And that is what we're doing this morning as we're lifting up the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. A banner across the country and a banner across the world. Amen. We're glad you've come to join us as we continue in our New Year Booster Series. It's not even no more New Year, but we're still on this New Year Booster Series. As we come to 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, in part 2 of our message, entitled, You Shall Recover It All. You Shall Recover It All. Why don't you invite a friend and let's go into worship as we praise the Lord and as we dig into the Word and as we're getting ready to recover everything that the enemy has stolen from us in this year of restoration. And I'll come back and pray with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the Word. Amen. Last week through the life of David, we began to take a, a look at the outright assault that the enemy has launched against the family. And one would think that the enemy would relent or would at least get tired of his attack which he began in the garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 but oh no instead he has re-engineered <laughs> re-engineered his weapon of mass destruction against your family and my family against your marriage and my marriage against my children your children and my children so that even today our government is asking us to redefine what marriage is and to redefine what family is in order to contradict the word of God. But how many here know that the devil is up? Because if this is a time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand up and say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, put it up. To our kings and in government, then let the church arise and say, If it be so, our God, our God, whom we serve, is able. Somebody holler is able. To deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your end, O king. Next verse. But even if he does not, even if he chooses not to, because we know he's still in control. Even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods we're not going to bow to your gods or worship the golden image you have set up am i talking to people who are still who still have deep convictions for the word of god this morning am i talking to the right people who are ready to fight back for their families if there's a time for the church to stand up it is now tomorrow will be too late because then the enemy would have come in like a flood to take our wives and to take our children away but we're not about to wait because we know this means so last Sunday from our text I began to show you how insidious 
the enemy's strategy is in taking down and in taking captives your family and my family in his threefold attack in the three ways the enemy attack our families first i share with you that the enemy attacks our families through number one division ever say division our text says in verse one then give me verse one then it happened what happened while david and his men were away from home busy doing the conquering thing lady sashi busy doing the achieving thing busy doing the the the, the main thing the amalekites the enemy slitted in like a snake came in through the cracks through the openings verse 2 and took captive the women the children and all who were left at home both small and great and carry them off good god of heaven meaning the family has now been divided the women were in one place and the men in another <laughs> and anytime you've got two people Anytime you've got two people in the same house going in one direction, going in opposite direction, you can be sure that the enemy has come in to steal, kill, and destroy because the spirit of division has already entered the house. Oh, talk to me somebody. Don't you know by now that the enemy loves to send the spirit of division into your house? Whether it's between you and your spouse or it's between you and your children. And you can be arguing. You can be arguing and fighting and not even know why you're arguing and fighting. But your Amalekite knows he knows the power of unity. As Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 says, If one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. Meaning the enemy knows that if you two, you're looking good, both of you, same clothes, I love that. Mm, my African sister, my African brother. The enemy knows that if you two, As Matthew, give me Matthew, Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 says, If you two shall agree on earth as starting anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. The enemy knows the power of unity that if you two should agree together, he's in trouble. So what does he do? He sends the vision. In order to get an opening to come in, to still kill and destroy. Oh, somebody's not hearing me this morning. Division is a spirit. Don't play with it. Don't flirt with it. Don't fool with it. Don't let it into your house. Because it's a demonic spirit. Oh, division is a spirit. As Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12 verse 25. A house that is divided against itself shall not stand. Yeah. I mean, things were going well for David and his men. Omar, they were on top of their game. Conquering and winning. 
they were used to coming home from fighting the Philistines to an applauding audience of women and children dancing and singing and, and beating on their tambourines. As 1 Samuel chapter 25, 29 verse 5 says, except this time in chapter 30 verse 1. Give me chapter 30 verse 1. Except this time, then it happened. <laughs> oh Lord, help me preach this message. Help me preach this message. They all came back to an empty house, you all. Lord have mercy. I can't even imagine coming home to an empty house where my wife is gone and my children are gone. It's a lonely feeling when you're used to them always being there even when you're not. Because you know any moment you walk home they'll be there. Except it happened. But what do you do when it happens? What do you do when the enemy hits you where it really counts? See, any loss is bad. Any loss is bad, especially if you're used to winning. <laughs> if you don't believe me, go ask Tom Brady and his New England Patriots Boys, we got the licking two weeks ago, or two Sundays ago, from the Eagles. Any Eagle fans here? Any Eagle fans here? Fly, Eagle, fly. David was used to winning, except this time he got some good licking. Here was David, anointed David. Warrior David. Conquering David. Reckless David. Soon to be king. In few months he will be king. Soon to be king David. Sitting. In his heap of ashes. Verse 3. Verse 3 says. Give me verse 3. House burned down. Ziglad went up in smoke. Wives, sons, and daughters all carried away into captivity. Verse 4. And there David and his men wept until there was no more strength in them to weep. That's bad. Have you ever wept till you had no more power in you to weep? Because your loss was so great. These were men of war, you all. These were grown men crying. <coughs> And when they were done crying, some of David's men became embittered. Verse 6. That they started talking about organizing a stoning party <laughs> to put David to death. What? 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 Which leads me to the second way that the enemy uses in his attack. Here is where we left off last Sunday. Write this down. Number two, insurrection. Oof. It goes from division to insurrection. Ooh. You got to know how the enemy operates. These were mighty men of valor, you all. Susan, these were mighty warriors. The 
they weren't used to being whipped. They were winners. And now their houses are gone, up in flames. The city of Ziglag burned down into ashes. Their wives and children are gone into captivity. Now it's David's fault. <laughs> Isn't it funny how it's always the leader's fault when things go wrong? Oh, the church is not growing. It's the pastor's fault. Oh, I got my stories of people stoning me too, believe me. Trust me. Oh, when things go wrong, Auntie D, you're right. When things go wrong, it's easy to find someone to blame, isn't it? Yeah. The first blame game is recorded for us in Genesis chapter 3. And I want you to see very briefly, briefly how the enemy can use insurrection to destroy the family because that's the first place he used this strategy. The first place he used this strategy is in the family. You know God told Adam and Eve in the garden not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? And in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, God came to Adam, the first man, asking, Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And Adam answered, Yes, God. I did. It's my sole responsibility. I'm sorry. Put the blame on me. Is that what the man said? Are you kidding me? The man said in verse 12, The woman, The woman you gave me, She gave me the fruit. And I, church, there was only one other human being on the whole world. And the man blames her. <laughs> and you notice, he doesn't even call her by name. He didn't even say Eve. Mm. He says that That's what we do in families when things go wrong. You, 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 see, you see what that daughter of yours did today? Like she's no more your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> or, or talk to your mother. She, she's, she's driving me. Oh, she's no more your wife, eh? Those are fighting words. Those are insurrectionist words. Your mother, this woman, she wasn't my idea. God, it was your idea. It's all blaming game. Wouldn't the blame have stopped? Think about it. Wouldn't the blame have stopped if Adam and Eve debriefed and Eve says to Adam, Adam, I admire your courage in pointing out to God that it was my fault. Yes, honey, I gave you the fruit. Thanks so much for telling God all about it. Are you kidding me? Was that what happened? No, Eve turned around and blamed the snake. Saying, the devil made me. We all play the game. I do it. You do it. And David's men are doing it here too. It's called insurrection. But think with me for a moment. Think with me for a moment. I know you're good thinkers. Suppose David's men picked up stones and killed him. 
What difference would that have made? Would stoning him bring their loved ones and their properties back? And it would have been easy for David to fight this man back. After all, they were embittered against him, complaining and bickering against him. But he didn't fight them back because he will be teaching us here three principles we can use to guard against insurrection when it rear up its ugly head in our lives. Jot down these three principles. Jot them down. They, they're going to come handy someday. This is a point within a point. Jot these three principles down. Number one, know who the real enemy is. Let me ask you, who is the real enemy here? David or the Amalekites? Never mind, never mind that David had been providing for them and their wives and children all this time as, as fugitives. David has been taking care of them in the wilderness. And never mind that as even verse 5 says, give me verse 5. Verse 5 says that David's two wives, I hear no man, I hear no him. Verse 5, which means favor. Isaiah verse 5. I hear no him, which means favor. And Abigail, which means joy, had been taken captive too. So David is just as much a victim as they are. Never mind that, that David is just also a suffering co-pilgrim. But what I want to know is, shouldn't the people who you have ate with, drank with, cried with, laughed with, prayed with, fought battles with, shouldn't those people be your greatest supporters in your hour of need? Have you ever been stabbed in the back by people who are supposed to love you? Oh, anybody in here have been stabbed by people who you've, who you've done the most for. Oh, forget about people you haven't done anything for. I, I, I'm talking about people who you have done the most for. Oh, talk to me, somebody. Job, Job says in Job chapter 6 verse 14, what the despairing man, what the afflicted man needs most from his friends is kindness. In the hour of trouble, not judgment. Hello, somebody. It's okay for people in the world to be stoning each other. But if you're getting stoned in the family, or you're getting stoned in the church, where you're supposed to be loved and encouraged, then something is wrong in our understanding of who the real enemy is. As Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual. See, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Come on, somebody. I, I know you like to think your boss is the enemy. I know some of you men would like to think your, your, your mother-in-law is your real enemy. <laughs> but our real enemies ain't people. The devil is the one who is after your family and my family. Even though he uses people. He is the one after your marriage and my marriage. Is the one out to destroy your children and my children. So enough of this fighting and stunning each other. And let's go after the real enemy. Amen. Yes. It's like this. I read somewhere. 
that when a group of thorough horse breed horse thorough breed horses face attack they stand in a circle facing each other and with their back legs they kick out at the attacker Dickin, do you know that they face each other in a circle and they kick with their back leg they kick at the attacker donkeys on the other hand do the opposite donkeys face the enemy and they kick at each other let me ask you are you a horse or a donkey uh, look at your neighbor and ask a horse or a donkey because you might you might want to wait to you might want to change your seat when you when you hear the response and if you are a donkey let me tell you you're like david's men who are ignoring who the real enemy is what i'm teaching you here is see beyond people see beyond the natural and see into the supernatural around you because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but paul tells us what we're wrestling against ah. here was david getting blamed for something that he didn't even do Chris, have you ever been blamed for something you didn't do? <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you didn't do anything and everybody is pointing at you? And you didn't even know what happened. You just walked into the room and everybody is raising up their nose at you. Mm. Mm. She did it. She did it. And you're, and you're going, did what? They are, saying, they are saying to you like they really know for sure. Quit trying playing games. We know you did it. Here was David getting blamed. But has it ever occurred to anybody that if King Saul if King Saul had not been flirting with the Amalekites in the first place, uh, when God told him to kill all the Amalekites because of their wickedness, back in 1 Samuel chapter 15, there wouldn't have been any Amalekites left to kidnap their wives and their children. If Saul had did what God told him to do in chapter 15, there wouldn't have been a kidnap in chapter 30. Because I'm just telling you, you can't be sleeping with the devil today and expect him to be nice to you tomorrow. It ain't going to happen. Oh, that might be too deep for somebody here this morning. I better move on to my next point. The second principle you need to guard against when it comes to insurrection is, put it up, know when to fight. It's not enough to know who to fight it's equally important to know when to fight ah I, 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 i'm so fascinated by what our text mm, rick by what our text didn't say david did in this in the midst of the insurrection in his hands i'm so fascinated about what the bible didn't say he did he did the bible didn't say that david said a word back to this man in verse 6 you know what you and i would have said huh huh you want to stone me <laughs> go ahead and stone me and watch me stone you back uh, look at all this bunch of nikon popes have they forgotten all that i did for them and their families but David said nothing. 
because he knows that everything doesn't have to be a fight and everything doesn't have to be a debate. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, timing is everything. Oh, that's good for my Facebook next, this week. Timing is everything. Don't you know you can be fighting the right battle at the wrong time? Oh, I wish I had me some witnesses in here that can testify that you can be winning and losing all at the same time. And then what joy do you have? And if timing is important, if timing is important, then here is a third principle that is equally important when the enemy rises up insurrection in your life. Number three, know what to fight over. No. No, know what to fight over. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Because not every hill is worth dying over. Oh, come on, you guys are sleeping. Somebody help me preach this message this morning. I said not every hill is worth dying over. Is there anybody in here who knows that some relationships are just too precious to sacrifice at the altar of insurrection? <laughs> to me, when the enemy brings into insurrection into your life, the question you should be asking yourself is, is this relationship worth sacrificing? Oh, I'm giving you some good tips this morning. Is this relationship worth sacrificing over this fight? Because when the fight is all said and done, you may think you have 500 people on your Facebook and 500 friends on your Facebook. But when the bottom drops out of your life, call on those 500 friends to come and bail you out. Most of the times, what you discover is most of what couples and families fight about ain't even worth the fight. <laughs> is this message happening to anybody here this morning? Oh, if I have time, if I have time, I will show you what 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 23 is saying. Put it up. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 23 says, But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations. In other words, don't listen to fake news. <laughs> Knowing that they produce quarrel. In other words, you just have to accept that some people are just plain ignorant. And when they try to get on your last nerve, you just say to them, whatever. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, practice it with me, practice with me. You're going to need it this week. Somebody's getting on your nerve, no, just go, whatever. Practice with me. What? Oh, put some swag in it. Yeah, that's it. Put some swag. Whatever. <laughs> oh, I got to move on. I got to move on. I got to move on. Help me out. I got to move on. I, I want to teach you today. But, but I, feel, I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching right about now. I want to teach you, but I feel like preaching right about now. This, this is the most wonderful part. This is the most wonderful part of our text. The text says in verse 6, that when David decided it was time for him to break up his pity party, look at what he did. But David strengthened himself. In the Lord is God. I, I love how King James Version says it. King James, give me the next one. But David encouraged, encouraged, encouraged in the Lord is God. And somebody here, I know the enemy has robbed you of your Ahinohem, your favor. And he has robbed you off of your Abigail too. Your joy. As he did David. 
and when your favor is gone your joy goes with it Amen. watch this yeah. i did some study give me verse five again i did some hebrew study on the word i he know him a he know him means favor somebody shout favor and abigail means joy somebody sound joy. joy see that's what the enemy comes to steal the enemy comes to steal your favor and it comes to steal your joy and when favor is gone joy goes with it but i stop by to tell somebody here this morning your crying days are over in the name of jesus because it's your restoration season and it's time for you to rise up of your ashes and encourage yourself in the Lord your God like David Hallelujah. and say devil you can't have my a he know him you can't have my favor anymore devil you can't have my Abigail you can't have my joy no more and say devil you can't have my family you can't have my praise you can't have my increase you can't have my breakthrough because this means war Ooh. is there anybody in here ready to encourage yourself in the lord your god Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, break up your pity party. Break up your pity party. Turn, turn, to, turn to your other neighbor and say, go get, go, go get your courage back. Get your courage back. Get your courage back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get your courage back in the name of Jesus. Get your swag back. Get your favor back. Get your joy back. Get your praise back. It's yours. It's yours. Catch it. It's yours. Catch it. It's yours. Catch it. It's yours. It's mine. I'm catching it. It's mine. I'm catching it. It's mine. I'm catching it. I can just picture David encouraging himself in the Lord is God. Saying in Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. I can just picture him encouraging himself with Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them. Some, a few, a little, somebody holla out. Oh, I can picture David up in the hills of Ziglag as he was looking down ah, at his houses burned down and there was dead silence in the camp. No sign of women, no sign of children. I can just picture David encouraging himself in the Lord through Psalm 23 and saying the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. Verse 3. He restoreth. He restoreth. He restoreth. I'm wondering, is there anybody in here who the Lord is restoring your soul this morning? Hallelujah! It's like this. It's like this. Whew. I love the story of a farmer who owned an old mule. One day this old mule fell into the pit. Give me the picture Isaiah. He fell into the pit. He fell into the farmer's well. And the farmer did everything he could to get this old mule out. But to no avail. So the farmer starts decided to save the old mule he decided to save the old mule from his misery by burying him alive see the enemy 
will think he's trying to do you a favor. He will think he's trying to get you out of your misery by burying you alive. But watch this. So, the farmer started to throw dirt on that donkey. And as he threw the dirt on the donkey, initially the donkey got hysterical. He would throw the dirt on the donkey's back and he would hit the donkey and the donkey was getting upset. Say, why is this farmer burying me alive? Doesn't still you know that I still got something in me? And he would throw the dirt on the farm, on the mule. And, and the mule, all of a sudden the light came on. Suddenly, a thought came into his mind. That when the dirt hit him in his back, he should just shake it off. And step on it. And so the farmer would throw the dirt and the donkey would shake it off and step up on it. He would throw the dirt, he would shake it off and step on it. He would throw the dirt, he would shake it off and step on it. No matter how painful the dirt, the whole mule kept encouraging himself by shaking it off and stepping on it. Shake it off. Step 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 on it. Soon, the dirt in the well he fell in was piled up high enough that the old mule was just able to step out on his own four legs out of the well that could have buried him. Oh, church, church, church. I have a suspicion that that old mule has been attending Wellman Heights Baptist Church <laughs> and he has been listening to Dr. Ty's New Year Boosters series. Hey! Have you ever experienced a blessing in disguise? I'm talking about what the enemy meant for your evil. God. 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 Turned it around for your good. Oh, I better move on. I better move on to my final point. Before I'm busting loose. Before I busting loose here this morning. I don't know who this message is for. But somebody here who has got something stolen from you by your Amalekites, I just want you to know that sometimes you can't wait for somebody to send you a Hallmark card to encourage you. Sometimes you can't wait for the burden bearer ministry to call you up you can't wait for the government assistant too but you have to stand up for yourself be a man be a woman of God and like that old mule shake up the dirt off of you and say to the devil I am more than a conqueror I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. Oh, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. My wife is blessed. My children are blessed. In the name of Jesus, my children are blessed. And no weapon <laughs> fashioned <laughs> against me. Oh, I better quit. I better quit this message. I better quit this message. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But if these words that are coming out of my mouth is like spirit and life for you, 
Stand up on your two feet right now. Like that old mule. Stand up on your feet right now. And I want you by faith. I want you by faith. Ah, I want you by faith to begin to shake off. Think of what the devil has been throwing at you all this time. I need you to begin to shake it off. And step on it. 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 Ooh. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. And let the enemy know. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a mighty praise this morning. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. You may be seated. Sit, sit, sit for a few more minutes. Sit for a few more minutes. We just did that by faith. Because the Bible said, we overcome by the power of the blood of the Lamb. And the power of our testimony. That's your testimony this morning that you're showing to the devil. But be seated for a little bit. So, our text is, after David was finished encouraging himself in the, in the Lord his God, he wanted his Amalekites, his enemies, to know that their third weapon that they're fashioning against him will not prosper. Amen. Let me give you the third weapon the enemy uses against him. Number three. And then I'll let you out of here so you can go to Popeye's. <laughs> Number three. Isolation. The third way the enemy comes to divide and conquer our families is through isolation. Watch this. Auntie Pam, you have to let your enemy know that you're never alone. Because if God be for you. Oh, I, need, I need help here this morning. Verse 7 says, verse 7, verse 7 of 1 Samuel chapter 30 says, Then David said, to who? Ah, uh, who? Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech. Please bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. Wait a minute. Where did Abiathar come from? Ah, see, I told you to read and read your word and read it deep. Don't just read it. Where did Abiathar come from? I thought the enemy in discovery, in discouraging David, wanted David to think that he was all alone after his men talked about stoning him. The enemy wanted David to feel like he's all alone. And that's when you think you're all alone, that's when pity party starts. But you got to let the enemy know that you're not alone. Because David was not alone. He got the Lord. He just encouraged himself in the Lord. And he's also got a... This is crazy. Watch this. Dickin, I did, I did, uh, I did, uh, I, I decided to look up what Abiathar means in Hebrew. Do you know what Abiathar means? Ab means father. Ab, Abba, Ab, Ab, father. Ayata means abundance. Put the two together, you get father. Oh, you are not talking to me. I'm going somewhere with this. Here is the devil wanting David to feel sorry for himself. That his men are turned against him. Wanting to make David feel he's all alone. But the devil didn't know that David still has the father of abundance Amen. with him. 
Is there anybody in here that still has the father of abundance still with you? Despite all that you're going through right now. So, verse 8. Verse 8 says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Meaning, Lord, should I go kick some? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's Dr. T's modern translation. Shall I overtake them? He's basically asking the Lord two questions here. First question, Lord, should I pursue? Second, if I pursue Auntie Mabel, would I overtake? But wait. You ask, what kind of question is that? Does anyone really need to ask permission for a thing like this? I thought it's a common sense to go get back what the enemy has taken from you. If somebody steals something from your house, you go to the police station and you report it. And if the police comes to you and say they've retrieved your stuff, you go and you get it back. You don't ask the police, should I come get it? It's like someone, it's like asking someone, I'm hungry. Do you think I should eat? But I'll tell you, I'll tell you why it's important to ask God's direction for what you think might be a common sense solution. I'll tell you why it's important. The reason is, some of us are going after stuff that God don't even want us to have in the first place. Sometimes, you're better off not having it. Some things you're better off not having. Oh, so, so it's wise for you to ask the Lord, Lord, do you want me to have it? Oh, oh let me put it to you another way. Let me put it to you another way. Don't you know that some things that you've lost are a blessing to you? Oh, 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 I got, I, oh, oh, I better move on with this message. I better move on with this message. Jack has been gone with another woman. Another woman he cheated on you for? And here you are. Here you are still wondering. Is that other one on? Lapel is on? Oh, okay. Oh, I got it fixed. I didn't even know I got it fixed. Okay, let's put that on. And here you are. Uh, uh, and here you are. Thank you, Jesus. Jack has been gone with another woman. And it's been 30 years. And you're still wishing that Jack was here. And you have picture of Jack all over your apartment. And you have picture of Jack even on your nightstand. And you're going, Lord Jack. Oh, you're not talking back to me. I'm saying there are some things the enemy has taken and it's best to tell your Amalekites, hey, you can have Jack. It's all yours. But some of you have relationships that you can't just let go because God has given you your wife God has given you your husband God has given you that child and you know that they are yours even though the enemy has stolen them only for a season because you know you shall recover it all Oh, I'm almost finished. But here, 
But here David was not going to depend on the senses anymore. He's been walking by sight over the last 16 months. Here was David in Ziglag. Do you know where Ziglag is? Ziglag is a Philistine city. David was living with the enemy. And he moved to Ziglag without asking God's permission. See, whenever you move it with the enemy, oh. but, but, but David now knows better. Now he's more wiser. Now he's more stronger. Anybody in here know better now? Anybody in here more wiser now? Anybody in here more stronger now? To know that there is a peace. You often forfeit. And oh, there's a needless pain you bear. All because you do not carry everything to the Lord. Oh, I don't know what this message is for this morning. See, you asked me. The ephod in verse 7. The ephod in verse 7 was the vest the high priest wore on Old Testament, in the Old Testament. The high priest would wear an ephod like this, you wear a vest. And the ephod was a means of communicating to God. So, when David, thank you Jesus, asked for ephod, it was a way of David saying, it's time to get my power of prayer back and God is still looking for some men of prayer in this church who are ready to fight back for their families beginning on their knees as second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says if my people who are called by my name will pray humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and heal their land where are all my men of heights here this morning Do you know do you know that we still have wednesday prayer meeting here at this church do you know that that we still have wednesday night prayer meeting and it's called breakthrough prayer concert it, it, it's 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 and you're wondering man you're wondering why you're not getting your breakthrough Oh, I know you can pray at home all by yourself. But isn't it the Bible that says in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30? One can put a thousand to flight. And two can put ten thousand. Oh, oh, all I'm saying to you is the power of prayer is a third key to victory over your Amalekite strategy of isolation. First, you encourage yourself in the Lord when it brings insurrection. And then, you, 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 you go to God in prayer with your Abiathar beside you. Oh, God, help me. Help. See, you think you can pray home at, by yourself. That's good. But the Bible says, two can put a thousand to flight. And David said, just get me a biata beside me. And watch the enemy run like a mad dog before me. Yes, Lord. Look, look at how the Lord answered back as I close. Verse 8. And he said to him, pursue. For you will surely. Hey, surely meaning without fail. Somebody said without fail. You shall surely overtake them. And you shall surely. Ooh, two surelys. Hey. I've never seen a text where there's two surelys in the same line. Two surelys. Meaning without fail again. 
you shall surely rescue some a few oh, not a few a little then somebody holler out when you get two shorties <laughs> when you get two shorties that's an ironclad promise from God to you oh somebody ought to be shouting right about now I, I can stop preaching right now because if the Lord tells you Marie if the Lord tells you you shall surely recover it all what else is there to say if God said it I believe it that settles it it is done you don't have to call folks to come help you anymore you don't have to go to madam Oka's focus to find out what the future is because the lord who holds your future already told you in his word that you shall recover it And if God says to you, you can have your stuff back, then you better get ready, David. You better get ready to go get your stuff back. Because it's yours. It's a done deal. Look at verse 18 and 19, what it says, and then I'm out of your way. Ah, oh, the Lord always leave the best for the last. So David recovered. How many church? I can't hear you. How many? Ooh. The author of First Samuel is very specific to let, to let us know that after David had caught up with the Amalekite, he recovered everything, including his two wives. I he know him, favor, and Abigail, joy. Verse 19, with nothing missing. See that? But nothing of theirs missing. With nothing missing, nothing broken. But wait. There is more. The best thing about this. Oh, I, oh, I, I just I, I want to learn this message. The best thing about this entire passage to you today is this. Verse 20. Look at verse 20. This is the best part of this message. Because David did not only recover all the enemy had stolen. But the Bible says. David came back with some bonuses. Oh, oh, you missed that. You missed that. See it in verse 20. He says, So David had captured all the sheep and the cattle which the people drove ahead. Stop there. That's everything that belongs to David. He got them all back. That's what he recovered back. But the text continue. Of the other livestock. Ah! Of the other livestock. And they said, This is David's spoil. The other livestock in verse 20 are the bonuses that David received, which belonged to the Amalekites. After he whooped them. Oh, I don't know who this message is for. As I make an altar call. But somebody here who has lost anything that is rightfully yours. I prophesy over you as the priest of this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you will pursue, God will give you back double for your trouble. He will store up. The wealth of the wicked for you there will be a restoration for you there will be a recovery for you there will be a replenishing for you there will be a revival for you there will be a refurnishing for you there will be a refurbishing for you and god will give it back to you press down shaking together running over god god not man 
not clubs not government but God would give it back to you if that word is for you shout yes stand up on your feet stand up on your feet worship team come up so I need you to go serve a notice welcome back I trust that message was a blessing to you as it was a blessing to many here this morning what a mighty God we serve is what is powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword and is able to deliver even to the uttermost hallelujah and this morning we resume in the part two of our message you shall recover it all as we see the three ways that the enemy comes to attack to still kill and destroy the first way is the vision it brings the vision into the family it brings the vision into the home and into marriages and relationship and we need to know that strategy that he is a divider and he comes to divide and conquer and the strategy against that is to encourage ourselves in the Lord when the spirit of insurrection comes that's the second uh, weapon that the enemy used insurrection uh, David faced insurrection from his men but the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord and when the enemy brings a spirit of insurrection in your relationship and people who you love turn against you that's what you need to do you need to stand up and encourage yourself in the Lord and the third weapon that the enemy uses in in, in, in attacking us in, in the family in this last days is isolation through isolation but you need to let the enemy know that you're not alone that you're never alone that God be for you that if God be for you no one can be against you hallelujah I hope you receive that word I hope you receive it I hope you receive it uh, because you will need it uh, in these days ahead in this year of restoration go and recover back go and recover all go and recover all i prophesy over you this morning go and recover all that the enemy all that the enemy has taken away from you and you shall receive it in jesus mighty name amen let me pray with you father i thank you for that person who's watching this message right now holy spirit would you encourage them come alongside of them to fight that good fight of faith to fight for their family to fight for their husband and fight for their wife to fight for their children and receive it back double for all their trouble we thank you that your victory that your victory is in you that we're not fighting for victory but we're fighting from victory and so we thank you that we can overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the power of our testimony in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen listen if you receive that word why don't you comment at the bottom of your screen this is a time for the church to arise and fight back for the family this is family day weekend this is family day week we need to fight back for our family and get it back the devil is a liar he's not going to have my family he's not going to have your family i rebuke every spirit of division as i rebuke every spirit of insurrection and every spirit of isolation in your house and in my house because as for me and my house we shall serve the lord in jesus mighty name Why? We want to come and be part of what God is doing here at Wilma Heights. Uh, we're located on 1687 Victoria Park Avenue, south of Lawrence. And you'll be blessed as we continue. We have two services, 845 and 11 a.m. Why don't you come and be part of any of these services? And we love on you. And we give you the best sitting house. We love you. We bless you. And continue to love your family until uh, Jesus comes. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Glory.